Oh, no, my camera's off. What happened? Ah, oh, jeez, I'm sorry, guys. I didn't check the camera thing before I started. Uh, it's got to be there, I guess. Right there we go. Look at me go. Hi, good morning. Welcome to Coffee and Craps with old Johnny here on Casino Gaming TV. Skill and luck reminds us that uh, Ken from Ken Knows Gambling, my good friend Ken, great show last night. Um, hey, Ken's here. And look what I'm drinking out of today. I got my Ken mug, as luck would have it. I got my Ken mug today. Um, good show again. So you're here, Ken. I'm going to say hi. Um, and I apologize to Ken last night because I, Ken and I are good friends and I've done a shitty job of being a good friend. I have not been emailing or calling or anything with really anybody. I, and I was, I was saying this um, to Dylan yesterday in, in, in over text. I'm like, man, I really, it, it's funny. I go live twice a day. I'm talking directly to you. We're doing the chat thing. Um, but I also feel at the same time kind of disconnected from the community right now. Isn't that weird? Um, we see each other all the time, but I'm feeling like I feel, I'm feeling this like weird disconnection because my work is so heavy right now. I'm going 9 a.m. to 9:30 p.m. last couple of weeks. This week too, working Saturdays. Next week I'm working Saturday and Sunday, and I'm just like not watching any videos. I'm not catching any lives. I'm not doing anything anywhere, um, and I just feel like I don't know what's going on, right? And it's it's weird like not being in Jeff's lives for the crapsy and all that kind of stuff. So it's it's been. Um, I'm sorry um, for just not being plugged into what's going on, except for my own shows. I feel like a little bit my myopic that way. Um, why was it a great show? Who asked that question? Um, Duracell, why is it a great show? It was a great show because um, Ken's doing a series, not like not unlike my, my morning paycheck, right? He's going like, so you want to be a gambler. And you go every day and you win your 10, 20%, whatever his goals are. And he's showing you like, again, whatever strategy he's playing is not the, it's not about the strategy. And I'll, I'm, I'm going to speak for you, Ken. Um, it's not about the strategy Ken's playing. That's the way you win at everything. They're all safe ways to play. Ken's got, you know, Ken is like me. Ken's very conservative. I know I play um, a gun shooting gambler here on TV, but in reality, when I'm at the casino, I'm pretty conservative and I'm pretty disciplined. Ken is showing discipline on that show. Ken's every day saying, I'm bu buying in for this. I'm pulling this much out of my 401G. He's got envelopes. I'm going to play with that money. I'm going to win my profit. I'm going to stack half of it. I'm going to play half of it. And he's showing you the way a professional manages their money, right? It's not just whip out everything you got on the table and just go for the moon, right? Gam professional gamblers don't play that way. My daily paycheck, and I've said this to you countless times, is not a home run play. I go out in that garage every morning trying to win 500 freaking dollars. It's not like I'm trying to win the lottery. I'm not trying to turn 5,000 into 10,000. I'm trying to win 500 freaking dollars to see about the pro style, right? It's the pro style. It's a different mindset. It's a disciplined mindset to go in there and with a decent enough bankroll and a good enough strategy, it's not going to destroy your bankroll. That's going to win you money on the consistent regular, right? You want a thing that's not going to lose you five grand every 10 tries. You want it it may lose five grand once in a while, but not every 10 times, right? You don't want to have that kind of ratio. You want to win your money. You want to win your 10% on the regular and not sweat. Ken is showing you how not to sweat every single day on his lives. where he's And he's doing it live. He's not bullshitting you with, with a recording, right? It's live every day. Boom, boom, boom. Going out there live, making it with all the games. Blackjack, Baccarat, Roulette, Craps. Does it all. It's a great series. And I think um, the way that he talks about money management... I don't care about how he plays the strategies. I care about the money management and the, and the discipline. And in fact, I think Ken is a perfect person to have on with me and talk on Fireside Craps about that piece of it, about the pro gambler, about the, about the money management and the discipline that it takes. It's still fun. We still like doing it, um, but it's going to be a, a bit of a grind. And I think that's, that's an important piece. Y'all should be, be catching him now. He's back, he's back on the thing. And yeah, Ken, it's 95%. Man. It's, it's, it's more than that. I mean, you got to have some strategy. You got to have some luck, but you got to be, you got to, you got to have the heart. You got to have the brain. You got to have the guts and the balls to get out. And that's such a hard thing for people to do. It really is hard to do that. And I think that's, that's why I love the series so much. Um, speaking of series that I love, um, if y'all haven't seen it, um, catch Midmo Yo. Chiro's got the thing. He's got the 25 things you got to do in craps before you die. It's a total non disciplined thing, right? Let's just try crazy shit and, and see what you can do. I, I love that series. He's he's fun. Um, so that's another good one too. Um, what else do we want to talk about here? There's something else I saw in chat that I wanted to address really quick. Let me go back a little bit here and just see. Um, let's see. Oh God, Victor. So why not ask Chat GPT? So Victor, I know you're all in on this, right? He's been texting me a lot. 
Um, chat GPT, if you don't know it, is an AI. It's an AI bot that somebody created. You can ask it questions and it gives you like, like legit answers. Like, you know, why, why are, why do lion women, why do female lions hunt instead of whatever? It tells you the whole reason. It can write code for you. It can do all sorts of things for you. Um, I think it's the beginning of the end of the world. Frankly, I think it's the beginning of the end of the world. AI scares the crap out of me. I tell my students all the time this, you know, I teach programming. I'm like, AI is the one thing that I think is going to be the end of society. And I know that you love it, Victor. And the reason why I say that is because when computers can write their own code, um, it, a couple things happen. Right? One, they won't do a great job. They don't have the human eye. Um, it's the beginning of the Terminator series, obviously, in real life. But more than more importantly than that, AI does some good things. There are some pieces of it that can be used for good. Most of the time, AI is, is not going to be a good thing. It's going to take the, the, the thinking out of people. It's going to take creativity away from people. It's going to let us think that we can let the computers do the boring shit while we do the exciting stuff. And guess what? It ain't going to happen. Um, just like robots are, are taking manufacturing jobs away from people. Yeah, they're more accurate, but they also take money away from folks. AI is going to do the same thing. AI is going to ruin a lot of the good that we've built over the last few years. I think there's, like I said, there's uses for it, but I'm not a huge fan at all. Not a huge fan at all of AI um, in terms of chat GPT type of things. I just, I look at that as a teacher and I go, oh my God, this is going to be, this is going to be the end of, of critical thinking for students. It really is going to be the end of critical thinking. And that's a shame. So anyway, there's my rant. There's one of my, I got so many rants. I got, I got this whole pile of like, of like political, like fix the America's problems rants. That's just, that's just, a, <laughs> that's a, I really do not like AI. I, think about AI. I, I, I'll give you this. Elon's pro AI. Listen, listen to this guys. And I'm going to give you a little, I'm going to put you in the mind of a computer programmer. Okay. But this is so not chat. So not crap, but think about this. Okay. Artificial intelligence is the ability of a computer to learn based on stimuli, based on inputs and outputs and frequencies of events, what to do to think for itself, okay? The Tesla, Elon Musk's brainchild, is a self-driving car. A lot of these cars are self-driving, right? The cars that can parallel park themselves, that's AI. That's the car learning how to park, learning how to drive. If you're on the freeway and your car is in self-driving mode, I want you to think about this, right? Let, and the, the car's got radar, right? It detects an accident four cars up that you didn't even see. You as a human didn't see the accident, but four cars ahead of you, somebody rear ended somebody right? And the pileup is happening. And the car can detect, the car can detect what's going to happen, right? It knows. It knows. It can't stop. There's no time to break and avoid a crash. The car knows that. The computer can tell, AI can tell all the calculations that it does. I can't crash, but I'm in self-driving mode. So what does the AI do? It has to decide. Is it going to try and break and, and allow you to get hurt, its occupants? Is it going to swerve to the right to avoid and take out the car next to it, which means somebody in that car may die? Is it going to swerve to the left in oncoming traffic and kill somebody over there? Or is this going to keep the same speed, right? AIs have to make those kind of calls. And if you're in self-driving mode, the car has to think for you and decide who gets hurt, who lives and who dies. I don't want a computer thinking about that. I'd rather have control and screw it up myself and pay the price, right? AIs are, we're putting computers in that situation. And that to me is not a good thing. So that's the very beginnings of, of that, right? That's like Terminator, not even 1.0, but that's where we're getting. And that scares the shit out of me. And again, put yourself in the meeting. You're in your computer programmer, you work for Tesla, you're in a meeting one morning and they say, hey guys, we're going to write the code this week that decides who lives or who dies in a car accident. And now you got to make, and there's literally, there's computer code written somewhere that makes the decision of where the car goes based on all the stimuli. That scares the crap out of me. So now I'm done my rant. Let's go talking about craps. Let's go to craps. Um, I wanna talk to you about this, the daily paycheck. We made money finally, right? Um, my Southern border strategy made money today. Um, it took me a while, right? It took like 60, 60 rolls or so to get there. We made 700 bucks today. Um, again, that strategy is a, for me, when I've made money with it, it's been two ways, right? I either make money quick right away, catch the trifecta and walk out of there. Um, or like today where I grindy, 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 and I make it at the end and it takes me an hour. That roll today would have taken three hours in a casino, maybe more, right? And when I would go with my wife and my parents and they would play slots for, they can play slots like camels. They're out there for five, six hours. That's the kind of strategy that I would play 
to stay at that three dollar craps table for four or five hours right i could do that all day long all day long and hover right in here and then pop one to come ladder same thing that's where those strategies were born from it's designed to grind um so i could play for a long time and not be bored and still make some money right that was the idea behind it and that's where it came from it works it works most of the time and most of the time i like yesterday made nothing so what today made 700 all good so um, that's the uh, that's the southern border. Now it survived me. So today, what did we do? Right, we had a situation where I threw pretty good for the most part. I had a lot of sevens, but I had a couple of good rolls. And I set two don'ts, picked both don'ts. Set two don'ts, picked both don'ts. I did it twice, where I picked off my don't passes or my don't comes. Um, it survived me being a decent shooter. It even survived once where I lost all the bets, and I still came back and 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 took it in the end. Right, so. Um, it survived me as a shooter today, which is good. I think that's a good thing. Most strategies don't survive me as a shooter. This one did, the Moonbow did, a couple other ones have, and that's I think that's actually pretty uh, pretty cool that it did. So we got a few more days at it, and um, and there we go. So um, let's see what's going on here in chat. Um, Waylon got a monster truck. That was <laughs> Waylon, I love you, brother. That is fantastic. Um, that's, that's so awesome. <laughs> yeah. You know what the thing is though? The monster trucks drive themselves too. GMC's GMC's, you know, 3,500 diesel self-driving truck. You know, the, the commercial they got, that thing drives itself too. So you gotta be careful, man. Um, anyway, let's get back to the regular stuff here. All right. Um, come out roll. We have this, we have, uh, I have to get the updates done on the website, but, um, Friday Night Fights this week is going to be Sith Lord SB defending his crown for the third time against Mad Dog. Now, Mad Dog, I've got to write an email to. I don't know if Mad Dog can play or not. Mad Dog apparently had a house fire um, that he's working through. So I don't know if he's even available to play. I'm going to write to him and see um, what that looks like for him. But he's currently next up against Sith Lord Espy. So be Mad Dog up next if, if he's able to play. Bookmark your calendars again for Big AZ's Royal Rumble in a couple of weeks. And also, let's get going with the Craps Nation throwing tourney. Um, and again, I'll highlight here the first thing. This is a tournament that George from CY's come up with to decide, or not decide, but for the tournament to figure out who is the quote-unquote best international dice thrower. It's the first annual Craps Nation version of this, and it's got some pretty strict rules. Um, there's a prize of 200 bucks at the end. Mudslide Mac, who's the first contestant to go in there, has already pre-donated the winnings that he expects to get to the Red Cross, and he's inviting us all to do the same. So if you're going to play in the tournament, there is no entry fee, but Mac is challenging us all to put some Red Cross money out there um, on your way into the tourney. So I think it's a good idea. The tournament itself is, is well organized. Um, not organized so much, but the, the rules and stuff, right? So we're still getting the infrastructure together to how to run it, but here's how it's going to work. Anybody can join. You're going to do a qualifying round. The qualifying round, you're going to throw three shooters. Three shooters. Get the dice till you seven out three times will take your longest your longest roll of a, of a full shooter. That's your qualifier, okay? The top 32 people, the top 32 long rolls will qualify for the bracket round. So it's gonna be a round of 32 following qualifying. The first person that's gone, Mudslide Mac has thrown 22. So you know you have to get at least 22 to leapfrog him and get yourself in there. So that's kind of like, I, I'm, I'm figuring about 20 or 20 plus will be what you have to get to get into the qualifier round. So best best, uh, best round out of three. Then we get into like the, the semis and quarters and you're gonna run that 32 people down to eight and that'll be the best of two rounds leading to the eight. And then when you get to the, the, the eight, the elite eight, like in basketball, the rules change a little bit. You're gonna go head to head with a person. So me versus you kind of thing. And in addition to the length of your role, you're gonna get points for things like the ATS, for come out sevens, for points being hit, repeater bets, all those things are gonna carry extra points. So it's like your roll count plus some points. And that's how we're gonna decide the winners. So in the end, it becomes not just about length, but about quality of the roll. And uh, if you're interested in doing that, get um, get yourself set up on on uh, Craft Nation's Skype and drop George, and e George from CY a direct message and he'll get you figured out. Um, I'm one of the judges. So this is, everything's gonna be judged. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put your camera or your phone on your table. So we can see the whole thing. A guy like me who's got two cameras, you can see me throw and you can see my landing zone. That's going to be good enough. If you have just one camera, like Waylon does sometimes from the end of his table, where you can see the whole table, we want to see your release 
the flight and the landing, and you pull the dice back nice and slow, no rollovers, and the judge who's watching along with you, right, like in Zoom or Skype, will qualify each roll and say, yes, that was a good roll, and we'll log the rolls in. So if you wanna do that, um, it's gonna be completely legit. It's gonna be, and if there's any disputes, we'll have a panel of three people to look at the video and, and make a decision. So it's gonna be no BS, all done live. Um, I think it's gonna be super cool. So um, uh, Wayland, just go to, go, to, go to George. Go to George's channel. Um, you can direct message him on Skype. That's the way you get in there. I'm working on um, them right now. We're gonna make a spreadsheet where you can just log into the spreadsheet and just sign yourself up. Kind of like we did with, with the Friday Night Fights. We'll do something along those lines. And that's how it's gonna be. So the, you don't gotta be a, a controlled shooter. You don't gotta be a dice setter. You can be a random thrower. We don't care, right? Matter of fact, we said yesterday, I think random rollers who people who don't think dice control's a thing, get in there, right? Be a random person and let, let's have a random person win the damn thing, right? Or make the brackets. Let's do it. Um, I think you gotta do it. Um, so entry sequence, um, you're saying like three enter. Okay, so the, 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 what we're doing here with this, there is, so the way we're doing it is scheduling. <laughs> like um, the entry sequence is literally based on your schedule. And so like I've signed up to do like some nights, like I can do almost every night starting next week from like six Pacific to nine. I left my calendar open for this. So if you can do it at eight o'clock on Tuesday, we look and see which which viewers or which which judges are available on that night and we just match you up. It's gonna be, I expect about a hundred people to wanna to, to want to do this and it's gonna be all about finding people to watch. Like how are we gonna schedule it out? It's gonna come a lot down to scheduling um, and that's it. But yeah, we're gonna play and we're gonna play and then, then we'll get into, it'll be easier when there's less people, I think. So anyway, it should be cool. Yeah, we can do it on Zoom. Um, Everybody's saying Skype. And the reason why we're saying Skype is this, because with my software Ecamm, with OBS, and with, I think, I think with VMix that Jeff used, I'm not, not percent sure. All of these apps have a built-in Skype plugin. So if the call is coming in on Skype, it can bring in the audio and the video really easy. Zoom is a pain in the ass. Zoom is so hard to get wired in that we just, we don't want to do Zoom if we don't have to. Skype is just easier. So that's the idea. So we want to, we want to Skype it if we can. Um, on my channel, you can do the, the dial-in thing that we normally do. It's As long as it's live, as long as we can see all the things, we're going to be good. And that's it. I'm really excited about it. I'm really excited about how this is going to turn out. Um, it's going to be a compelling thing. It's going to go, you know, till spring. And it's just something else for us to watch, right? It's just more, more craps content, more things to watch. And uh, it's just going to be, it's all really good. Um, so there we go. All right. Um, Next thing I want to do, I think, is talk about Craftsy. I think, it's, oh, no, no, we hard hat. I got, I got to get the hard hat in. Um, Jeff, current hard hat winner. I hope Jeff, I'm not sure if Jeff's in the chat today. Um, if you are, Jeff, let me know. I Hopefully you got the helmet, uh, the hard hat. I sent the hard hat to Jeff last week. I hope it's arrived. And hopefully we'll see the hard hat on Jeff's table soon. Um, it'd be a nice little decoration out there. And then we're, we're thinking about, again, who's going to be our hard hat award winner Um for February, and again, the February hard hat winner is based on January's performances. And like I keep saying, the hard hat award is like the Mike Rowe, it's like the, the Dirty Jobs Award, right? It's, I want everybody to really recognize how hard this job is <laughs> to put these videos out. The amount of hours that Big AZ puts in and the people you see, right? Sideshow Gamble left for a work trip yesterday. He's gonna be gone until November, right? He pre-filmed like 50 freaking videos for us. Like that's amazing, right? Dial it, skill and luck right, is the puppet master behind all the channels. He's talking to everybody, he's putting strategies out, and he's not even on his own channel that much. He's on our channels more than he is his own. He puts in a ton of work and time, right? Vince puts in, as you know, a ton of work and time. Alfredo from TCS, that guy shoots constantly, and he's always on, and he's, he's improving so much on the channel. Um, obviously, George, with all the side work he's doing on this tournament, deserves a huge shout out. Ed with the lessons. HCS, they're on their cruise. Good luck, guys. Um, Joe from Crash Master Journey is putting a ton of content. Of course, Waylon, right? So um, that's the nominees I've got for February. Um, if you want someone else nominated, fine. We'll put them up there for March. Um, but this is it. We're going to vote in about, uh, we'll, we'll vote next week. We'll probably vote. I think next, is next Friday still January? Um, I think next Friday is still January. Let me look at my calendar. Come on. Next Friday is still... Um, actually, no, we'll have to vote on Tuesday. Ne next Tuesday's the 31st. We'll vote on Tuesday. 
Um, that'll be the, that'll be, that'll be the day. Uh, that'll be election day for February. So, all right, there it is. Let's go. Let's go and talk about Crapsy a little bit, or not Crapsy. Let's talk when Crapsy. I'm going to switch screens here and give me a second to get things set up for you. Um, we're going to go here and let's talk wind craps a little bit. So yesterday, um, we did wind craps and I gave you the basics. Like we made a super basic script and I really want to talk today about a little bit more kind of advanced scripting. And that's the wrong, that's the wrong screen. Hold on a second. I want to get the wind crap screen. There we go. That's better. Okay. Um, I want to get into some more advanced, more advanced betting if we can, or more advanced scripting if we can. So let me review where we were yesterday, and then we'll start with some new stuff for today. All right. So yesterday we 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 left ourselves off here. We have a shooter at the table. Uh, that shooter is called Pro Craps, not surprisingly, and we made a simple script. We're gonna we're actually gonna make um, an outside ladder script. I spelled that wrong. Um, not unlike Wayland's mind strategy. Okay, that's kind of what I want to get to because it's got some interesting logic that has to go on to make the script work. So the way that Windcraft's scripting works is this. When your script is activated, we'll activate our script here, um, it will engage itself. So when you're rolling the dice, every time the dice roll, it starts at the first line of code up here, and it's going to run every line of code and make a decision based on what code you wrote. It's just gonna change your bets based on what you've got here, okay? Now, what we do, today we're gonna to talk about conditionals, but you're gonna see your first conditional statement right here. And the essence of computer programming is this, if then. That's the essence of most computer programming, okay? Programming is logic to some degree, the logic we're going to use most of the time is if something happens or if something is true, then we do this thing in response to it. Okay. Here we're saying the first thing that runs, we roll the dice. Let's say it's a five. The script says, if we're initializing the script, well, we're not because the dice are rolling. Now, when I collect this button from active to inactive, and I go activate and we say, yes, now this script runs. And yes, we are initializing the script. So see this here. When I press that button, this becomes true. If initializing script, that is happening. So the program runs the next set of code inside or after the then. If we're initializing, then we do whatever comes next. We're going to say auto handle the winning bets by saying same bet and take the winnings back to our rack. We're going to auto handle our losing bets by saying same bet plus 25 bucks. And we're going to start our bet sequence by betting 25 bucks on the buy four the buy 10, the place five, and the place nine. That's the initialization of the script. And you can see out here on the, on the felt that that's what's happened. The puck is off. We made our initial bets out here on the felt. That's this script starting itself off, okay? Then we roll the dice. We roll the dice and we want something to happen after the dice roll. Now, what's gonna happen here? Let's go ahead and I'm gonna use this down here, by the way, this, this little guy over here. This thing is lets me roll the dice manually. I don't have to use the RNG, I can just pick numbers. And what I do here is I'll pick numbers to test that my script is working the way that I expect it will. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're, let's just catch a point. We'll catch a point of six, a three, three, six. And the puck goes to the six. Now, in our script, I'll show you how this kind of works line by line in a minute. But for right now, if initializing script is false, that doesn't happen because we, roll, we already did it. We rolled the dice. There's no code to run after that. So here we go. Let's roll again. And again, our winning bets should be same bet. Our losing bet should be same bet plus a quarter. Let's see if that logic works, right? That's the basic, basic logic. Here we go. We're going to take a win on the, on the five. I'm going to roll a two, three, five. We get a win and you can see um, that we won. We won some money. Okay. Let's do it again. A two, three, five, right? It should win. Um, Where's our win? Why is it saying we're losing? What the hell's going on here? Bankroll 992 lost $8, really? There we go. Uh, why is it losing money every time? What the hell's going on? Um, our script is jacked up. Bet 25, same bet, take winnings. What in the hell? Oh, I have a field bet. Why is there a field bet out there? Um, that's what's going on. I, 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 let, me, let me restart. Game new. I, I must have clicked out in the field at, at some point. No, I'm not saving that stuff. No, no. 
Okay, I, I put a few, I'm like, why is my, why are we losing? Let's try it again. Let's initialize our script. Active, initialize, there we go. Okay, we're back here, unlock. I, I clicked in the field when I came over here. Um, my fault. Let's run a two, three, five. Um, let's go. Ah, shoot, we lost our connection to our computer. Unlock, what happened? There we go, let's try it one more. Sorry about this, guys, my my setup isn't working. Let's do this, let's do a, uh, the five is the point, let's catch a nine, let's roll a four, five, nine. We should see that we win money. There we go, we won 35 bucks. Let's do um, an eight. This is the case where nothing happens. We didn't win, we didn't lose, let's roll an eight. Nothing happens, let's roll a seven. Auto handle losing bet should be same bet plus a quarter. Let's roll a seven, a two, five, seven, and our bet should move up to 50 bucks. You see that? We'll roll another seven on the come out. Our bets don't change because they're off with the point. Let's catch a point of six. Let's roll a seven. Now this should go to 75. We're laddering up every time we lose. This is a simple, basic ladder. Yeah, nice and easy. Let's add some logic to it though. I wanna, I wanna do something um, a little bit more interesting than just same betting all the time, okay? So why don't we handle that kind of ourselves? All right, let's, let's take the losing bet case off of this. We're gonna take the auto handle losing bets away. We're still gonna start out and saying, handle the winning bets with same bet take winnings. We're always gonna same bet. We're gonna set those initial bets, okay? But now we're gonna add another condition. And again, we're gonna do some if logic. If something, then, and I can put it on the other line, then do something, and the if. Okay, there's your basic computer logic. If something happens, then we're gonna do something, okay? Otherwise, we're gonna do something else. Okay, that's gonna be our, our, core, our core logic right there. So we can say something simple like, um, I don't know, if, um, let's say, let's do this. We'll say if, check this out, if last roll, and this uses English, right? If last roll was not a come, out roll. There's our condition. If it's not a come out roll, which means we have a point established, okay? And I'm going to indent this so it's easier. And not any bets wins. This is interesting. So if it's not a come out roll and no bets win, this is going to be the mind, right? If so, in other words, it's not a come out roll. In our situation, the point was six, let's say, we rolled an 11. No bets win. What are we gonna do? Let's increase the bets by a unit, right? We can increase every single bet by one unit. So our then is gonna be, then we'll say add $25 to, and in parentheses, we're gonna say the buy four, the buy 10, the place five and the place nine. And if, there's our first condition. So you make a conditional by saying, if some condition is true, in this case, it's two conditions. If it's, if it's not a come out roll, meaning we have a point, and none of our bets have won, then we're gonna add 25 bucks to all the bets. Let's see if that works. I'm gonna first test that it works by watching the, the dice out here, and then we're gonna go ahead and, and I'm gonna show you how Windcraft processes this. Let's turn this off and back on again. Our bets are gonna be out here set. They're still at 50 bucks from last time. Let's roll the dice, let's catch a point of six. And here we go. Now, I think it's gonna work, right? The next roll, is gonna not be a come out roll and we're gonna make sure that nothing wins. I'm gonna roll an 11 here. We should see our bets go up. Let's roll an 11. We'll do a six five. Six five, yo. Our bets go up by a quarter. They go to $75. Now this time I'm gonna take a win. We're gonna get a two, three, five this time. The bet wins and the bets all stay at the same level. 
See how that works out there? So the bets win. They all stay at the same level. So we have our little Wayland's Mine ladder going, right? We start out with our base bets. And if we don't have a come out roll, we win. Let me show you how this works in sequence. I want you to see how Windcraft's actually kind of processes this script because understanding how the scripts work, I think is important. So I'm gonna go ahead and seven out here. We're gonna force a seven to get out. Actually, let's do, um, let's do a new game. I'm gonna reset the game because we don't have a way to clear the bets out yet. Um, do I wanna save the bets now? Uh, yes, we'll save the script. No, we're not gonna save the session. Okay, we're coming out. Our script initialize it here. Now, I'm gonna turn this option on. It says options, show steps during play. This is gonna be annoying. This is gonna be a bunch of pop-up windows, right? But I want you to watch what happens with the logic in here. Now, I apologize in advance because it's gonna be red. It's gonna be hard to read because the colors are red, but I'll read it to you as we see this. Let's first catch a point. I'm gonna go here and we're gonna do a, uh, let's do a six as a point. There's the six and here it comes. You can see this condition block. This is beginning of condition block. If, and I'm gonna hit the next button, it'll go into the block. If initializing script, and it says condition is false. We're not initializing our script. So it's gonna skip all of this. Watch this next, it goes right to the end if. Boom, it skips the whole thing because it was false. Next, if beginning a condition block, if last roll was not a come out roll and any bets don't win. Also, that is false. So it's gonna skip the block and go here and nothing changes on our script. That's how Windcrafts works from top down. Let me take another roll. Let's take one that's a non-winner. We'll roll a yo again. We'll do a six, five yo. Again, Windcrafts runs top down, no, no deviations, right? If beginning of block, are we initializing our script? No, we're not. It's false. So it skips the whole block. Now we're gonna say the next block, beginning of the condition. And again, conditionals are if then. The condition is if last roll was not a come out roll, and it wasn't. We rolled an 11 after the point was established. And, and here's, the, here's the weird wording, if not any, and in and, and Windcraft's any with the parentheses around it, says anything with inside the parentheses can be true. So here we're saying if not any of our bets wins, and it's weird like bets wins is, is a weird way to word that, but it's saying if not any bets wins. So if it's not a come out roll and nothing won, then we're gonna add. So here this says condition is true, I say next, and it goes into here and now it's gonna add 25 bucks to all of our bets. There's Wayland's mind at work, right? That's gonna be the first condition, right? We go boom, we go up a level. If we have a come out or not a come out roll and nothing, nothing uh, wins. We go next and we're done. And now you see the result is our bets now are at 50 bucks instead of 25 bucks. That's the first conditional that we can write here for this strategy, okay? I'm gonna turn that option off real quick because it's annoying. And let's write our second condition because really um, what we might wanna do is say something like this. Let's do another one. Let's say if, this time we'll say if any of our bets wins. So if any bet wins, and we'll do another and, and let's just pick a number. Let's just say, and the place, um, let's see, how do I wanna do this? Uh, if any bets wins, let's just say on any win, then we'll do this again. We're gonna go back to base. We'll, we'll go back to base on a win, no matter what. So as we increase up, let's go back to base. And if, let's see if that works, okay? Let's reactivate our script, we'll turn it off, we'll turn it back on again. Now we've added two conditions, right? If we don't win, right, we go up a, a unit. If we do win, we go back to base. Every time we win, we go back to base. So it's gonna be, it's not the correct ladder, right? It's not the correct mind, but it's gonna give you some idea of conditions, okay? Here we go. Now we're gonna say, if any bet wins, so now we're here, let's test it again. We'll do it, we'll do another yo, six, five yo. Bet should go up to 75 bucks. Now we're gonna win one, let's win the five. Let's go at two, three, five. Boom, five good rolls, back to base we go. So both conditions worked, right? Not a come out roll, we don't win, up a unit. If anything wins, we go back to base, okay? 
I'm also going to do this. We're going to do one more condition. We'll say if, and again, any that loses opposite condition, then, and if, and again, on the seven out, if we lose a bet, we lose one, we lose them all here, right? If any bets loses, then also we'll reset the base. So I'm gonna do these two look exactly the same. Um, that's okay, they're gonna change later, okay? But for right now, we can say if we lose any bet, we go back to base. This is my run for the hills clause, right? Let's stop it, let's start it, let's test it. Go back out here. Um, we're on a point of six, we're gonna roll a yo, it makes the bet go up. We roll a yo, it makes the bet go up. We roll an eight, it makes the bet go up. We roll a five, we win, the bets go back to base. Let's do again, we'll roll a, an eight, <clears throat> bets go up, we roll an eight, the bets go up, we roll a seven, back to base, right? So we've now we've got two conditions that are at play. We've done it twice, if, actually three, three conditions. Now that we know that it works, I can watch that it worked, and I can, again, I'm using the kind of the, the thing here to sort of set our roles um, on purpose to make, to make it work the way I wanted to, to test all the different scenarios. Let me turn the option on again to watch, and I want you to watch Wincreps think through this. Okay, here we go. We're gonna get, set a point of six. Beginning of block. Okay, if we initialize the script, no, it's false. So we skip all that code. Then we says, if last roll was a come out roll and no bets win, well, that's also false because it was a come out roll. Cool. Um, next condition, if any bet wins, that's false. So it skips all the code. Next condition, if any bet loses, that's false. It skips all the code and we're out here at 25 bucks. Let's have the 6-5-yo case. 6-5-yo, again, first condition, are we initializing the script? No, skips all the code. Next condition, if last roll was not a come out, which it wasn't, and not any bet wins, also true, both things are true, it says, hey, let's go in here, let's add 25 bucks to the bet. So if those things were true, you run the code after the word then. Then we say, if any bets wins, well, that didn't happen. So we're gonna skip that. If any bet loses, also didn't happen. We're gonna skip that. And now we're out and our bets are up by 50 bucks. Let's test the win case. Two, three, five. Once again, if initializing script, it's false, so it skips. If last roll was not a come out roll and not any bet wins, this time a bet did win. So that condition's false. It wasn't a come out roll, but the second one was false, so it skips. Now we say, if any bet wins, well, that's true, we won on the five. So it goes inside of that and says, yeah, since you won, we're gonna bet a quarter, we're gonna go back down the base. And again, if any bet loses, we know that's false, so it skips the last condition, and we're solid. And that's how Windcraft steps through all of your logic and every conditional block, we call these conditional blocks, in every block like this, it's gonna to look to see if what you said was true. And actually this might even read better if it was all in one line like this. Was this whole thing true or not? And if it is true, then we come down here and run the next line of code. That's conditions, okay? Now, let me go ahead and run this exact script in hyperdrive. I don't expect it to do too well because we have too much, we don't have enough money here. We only have a thousand bucks. Matter of fact, let's change it. I'm gonna to go to game, configure, Let's give this player uh, $5,000. We'll make their, um, we'll go to the, where is the money? Where is the money, the bankroll? We're gonna go to 5,000 bucks, $5,000. For this player, I'm going to make a new game. Game new. We're gonna save our script. We're not gonna save our session. We're gonna buy back in and it'll give us 5,000 bucks. You can see up here. It's got to do all the conditions again because I didn't turn the, 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 the option off. Sorry. Let's go all this off. Options do not show. Now we're going to go to statistics, bankroll, and it brings up this screen. And this screen is where you can run it in super, super drive. Let's run this strategy as is, right? Back to base on a win, back to base on a loss, up the bets if you don't win. 
No other logic than that. Super basic logic. It's actually the wrong logic. It's not the full mind strategy, but let's just run it in hyperdrive for grins and see what happens. Let's just start the hyperdrive and go whoop. And look at that craziness. Um, so far it's one, look at it's going great. It's actually lasting and there it goes to zero. So it took about a thousand rolls to get to zero, but at one point it won a thousand bucks. Yeah, let's do it again. Let's do a game um, new. That was pretty fun. Um, not gonna save the stats. We'll say, okay, let's do it again. I'm gonna watch for zero and try and stop it at zero. Here we go, start hyperdrive. Let's let it go. Doing well. It's holding its own, oh, there it goes, to zero. So it took about 2,000 rolls to get to zero, and at one point we won 5,900 bucks, right? Pretty cool. Um, Windcrafts let you analyze this even further. I could log in and look down at what these rolls were. Look at this like bad, look at this down here. This is like a bunch of seven outs. That's horrible down there. Um, that's a bad sequence at the end there. It just got ugly. But you can look at like, for example, statistics, I can look at my roll frequencies and I can see well, not that. Let's look at more interesting. Let's look at the um, uh, roll totals. This gives you sort of the spread. You can see the expectation versus the reality for pro craps. Um, not a perfect pyramid here on these rolls, but it's kind of cool to see how the dice rolled out. Um, actually, I think, no, I didn't change it. Um, there's that. We can do other reporting as well. Matter of fact, let's go back and do what we did yesterday. I'm going to go back here and do action. Um, let's do dice roll files and we're going to run my rolls. Is that what we just did? We just run my rolls. I think we might have, um, let's run this again. Let's run game new. I think it was already doing it. Session does not save. Don't save the session. Okay. Let's run this again with my dice rolls action dice roll files. Let's see. I think that might be, it might be what I'm doing is the same thing. Ooh, it's slower. Let's watch this against John's rolls. This is my practice rolls. This is my 3000 rolls from the garage and 3000 rolls from coffee and craps. Let's just see how it works. Um, Jen, I'm not going to let it go negative and bounce back. Um, only because I mean, I can, um, but I don't think that that teaches me anything, <laughs> right? Um, I, I know Vince does that a lot. I don't like to go negative with this thing. I like to let it let it play itself out and see at what point does it go to zero, right? Um, let's see, this is going to take it a hot minute because it's it's doing this in real time here. So let's let it roll itself out. It'll take it a minute or maybe four to get to the full 4,000 rolls. It's running super slow. All right, let's do it. Um, all right, there is there, and by the way, there is options to let negative bankroll. I just, like I said, for me, and I think on Thursday, I've got this planned out. Thursday, I'm gonna show you how to code this, these scripts with a bankroll mentality to where it's gonna win 500 bucks and reset the bankroll or lose all 5K. We're gonna run it that way to see win rates. Um, I agree, Vince, setting the bankroll to negative will let you help find what you should start at at a given bet level. Um, I'm just trying to determine win rates. I wanna see how well this thing goes and, and how fast it goes to zero. Some strategies against my roll set don't last 500 rolls. Some strategies go to the very, very end of it and make money the whole way through. Here, um, we've made about 5,000 bucks at our, at our peak so far, which is cool. Sorry this is taking so long, it's just halfway through. But anyway, while that's going, I guess I'll leave it to questions here. If you have questions in the chat, let me know. Um, looking at the script code while the, while the graph is running. What questions do you have about scripting? Um, what do you wanna see this week? I'm gonna get into variables tomorrow, and then I'm gonna get into bankroll management with this thing on Thursday. And then Friday, we're gonna code up a brand new one. I'm gonna, maybe I'll code the Southern border up on Friday, just so you can watch it. Watch me code, oh, there we're, we're at zero, sorry. We're at zero, stop, okay. Um, and there it is. So there's our, our thing. Um, it was running against my rolls before. So we're at, yeah, about 2000 rolls. It goes to zero. It wins about a thousand bucks on a good run. So, um, we'll fix this tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to go ahead and do, we're going to cap the bets, right? Sometimes what will happen here with this, this add 25 
we'll, we'll have, you have a thousand bucks on every number at some point. That's where those big drops come in. Tomorrow, what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna put a cap on this. We're gonna say, you can't go higher than level five, okay? And um, we'll say, if any bet wins at level five, will go down the base bet. Otherwise, we're going to bring the same bets. So we're going to change the logic to John's version of the mind and see if that changes a little bit. So, um, yeah, Mimo says programming is not his thing. Programming is not for everybody. Um, however, if you want to test your strategies, this is a great way to do it. This is a great way to get in there and pop them in here and run them against either a known set of roles or like Vince does, run them for days and let them go negative and run them for eternity and see how these things respond. So I think it's an important thing to get to them both. And let me show you something here too. I'm gonna to go back to Cloud City and show you kind of, let me get over here. Um, let's go to Cloud City Computing, Cloud City Software. And again, this is where you're gonna buy Windcrafts. It's 14 bucks, right? Do not be shy about spending $14, please. It's not a lot of money. Um, Trust me, it's worth the 14 bucks just to run one script and see what you get. Now there are, there are somewhere in here, I forget where he has it. Um, where is the script library? I forget where he's got it. Windcraft Pro. I may have to just look it up. I may have to just do this. Windcraft, if I do Windcraft's scripts, it goes right to his site. There's this uh, auto bet files. Um, on this page here, I'm gonna zoom way in. He's got, look at all this, auto bet files. The ones like I just wrote, he's got, look at all of them that he's already written, right? And he writes this all the time. The squeeze play is already in there, right? Waveland's mind's not in there, but the coin pusher's in here. Um, the Iron Cross 68 is in here, the, the quarter press with ease. Um, there's a bunch of minor in here too. He's got like the, the there's the, the 410 ladder, um, the cum ladder, the Butterberg, all the things that the blender is in here, the horseman is somewhere in here. So he codes up a lot of these for us and they're just here waiting for us. There's a five count is in there. Um, so you can test these things out and watch them play. The way that you learn how to code the windcraft stuff, honestly, is looking at some of these things. Like what I, you know, they're, they're confusing and complicated, but if you look at them, I find that being the best way to do it. So if I go to the windcrafts folder here and just pick out, you know, any one, any one of these things, like pick out, I don't know, um, like there's a 555 don't that I did one day. Um, and again, this has got lots of, lots of good examples. Let's zoom out. Oh no, zoom in, zoom in. There we go, view, zoom in. And here's again, logic around other strategies. So you can look at other code that somebody else has written and learn how to write these scripts yourself or how to tweak them. So hope that helps. I hope that uh, getting a little deep dive here in, into, uh, into Windcraps is a good, is a good look. Um, and yeah, we can definitely um, do other strategies together. I can, I, and I, what I'll do is like, when I'm doing the, uh, the daily paychecks now and I write and I do them, I'll also finish up on Fridays with the script. So you can see how the script for that thing was written and I'll make them public. I'll, I'll probably just give them to Steen and have them publish them up there. I think that's, that's a plan, but yeah, I'll write these in front of you more often than not so you can see how they work. And um, yeah, there we go. Uh, Newberry's got it right. Windcrafts will let you know what you're up against. And I will tell you this, there's not a strategy in the world that doesn't do this, does not go to zero. Like that is literally, that literally right here, this zero, Every single strategy goes to zero. They all end up here. Not one doesn't end at zero. It's 100% of the time, every strategy is ass. They all end up with no money. They'll catch a run sometimes where you'll make money, they all go to zero. <laughs> it just is what it is. There's no, there's no magic to this thing um, at all. So Victor says this, um, which is good. 50% um, win goal, except for I, don't, I don't agree with your numbers, um, right? but you can do it. We can code and I'll show you on Thursday how to code win goals and loss limits. It's very easy to do. When I write you the code for it, you're gonna go, oh my God, that's so easy. You can do it and say, my win goal is 10%, my loss goal is 100%, 20, 80, 30, 70. And you can move it down to 50, fit whatever you want. And we can actually run this and see how the strategies work over time 
with different with different wind goals and loss limits. I think it's definitely really cool to see how that works. So it's 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 the it's the money. It, that's where the money's made here. And like I said, Victor's talking about this. Um, Newberry says it gives you knowledge of what you're up against. Without doing this kind of stuff, you just can't know, right? You can roll 50 times on the table. It's going to tell you a little tiny bit. And it won't tell you everything. I think it's important to see these things um, run over time. Uh, Dice Dr. Dan says, this is very similar to basic. Yes, it is. Um, Windcraft's Pro was written in Visual Basic. So what Steen has done is given us a scripting language that is very similar to the old, the old basic programming language. Um, it doesn't give us the ability to do functions or subroutines or things like that. It's very much top down. So the way I write code with more logic in it, you can't do some of that stuff. It just has to go top down, which is a challenge sometimes, but you do have the power to get it done. So I think that's a um, good question there, Dan. Um, Skill says, check my, my PCs and queues. So what's, what am I missing here? Um, let's see, there's a lot of stuff about Skynet, which is great. DJ, borders got holes. It's got holes. <laughs> You're so damn funny, dude. That's great. Um, let's see. What skill? The new AI. Um, Vince is giving me suggestions with coding. Um, I didn't see any of that. So let me look at the cues. And again, I'm trying to give you like, I'll look at, I'll look back there in a minute here and see what Vince is suggesting with coding wise. Um, actually, I can do, I think I can do a Vince, right? Can I search for Vince? Um, so... Vince has got a lot of stuff in here. So there's all sorts of stuff that we're talking about. I'll get to this. I'm going to put these up on screen real quick and I'll talk through them with you. But then we're going to get, I'm going to get to this stuff during the week. So I think I'm trying to do, um, stage us through like um, the programming piece. I don't want to put it all at you all at you once. But so Vince is saying like, if beginning new session, bankroll is whatever. So you can set your bankroll to start, right? And then you can bet your money out there. Um, you're giving me other things here. Place, if anything loses, then you bet this. So you can bet your prior amounts plus one. There's all sorts of logic that Vince is putting out here that you can do in the routine. I'm trying to make this as easy as possible. Here at Bankroll, great at the beginning Bankroll, this is how we manage our money, right? We'll do Bankroll deposits. Again, that's going to be for me on Thursday. So on Thursday, I'm going to run Bankroll management. So tomorrow, we're going to do variables. Tomorrow, I'm going to teach you how to turn $25 that we have here into a variable number. So we're going to not go um, with 25 bucks. We're going to make that number some number of units. I'm going to change that into a unit count. Okay. And we're also going to say, um, we're not just going to keep on stacking. We're going to go to five levels. L-E-V-E-L-S. That's tomorrow. We're going to use variables on, two, on Wednesday. On Thursday... I'm going to go bankroll management. So Thursday, some of the things Vince talking about here with regards to the bankroll stuff, that'll be Thursday. I'm going to show you ways to manage your bankroll here and manage your session count. So we can make it stop rolling at certain conditions. We can reset our bankroll at certain conditions. We can stash money at certain, there's a lot of things you can do to kind of simulate professional play with the app. I think it's, that's one of the best things about it. So with all that said, folks, that's my, that's my spiel on Windcraps. Um, for today. Again, we're going to get to variables tomorrow. We'll do bankroll management on Thursday. On Friday, I'm going to write you a full script top to bottom. In fact, Friday, I'm going to code out the Southern Border strategy. Actually, Friday, I may either Southern Border or the Moonbow, one of the two. Um, they both have interesting logic to them. They don't seem like they do, but they do. So we'll do one of the, other, one of the two on Friday from top to bottom, a full script with logic, and I'll run it against the rolls and we'll see how, how it performs. So, um, there it is, guys. Hope that all made sense. I hope I got all the questions answered. And again, there's more to come. I could do a hundred Windcraps videos. We'll never cover it all. There's so many things in the language. And as Vince points out, there's many ways to do the same thing. There's many ways to increase the bets. There's many ways to reference the bets, many ways to tell what won. There's many ways to tell what dice just rolled. So um, you just gotta think in English, like say it. If it's not a come out roll, and I didn't win, do this thing, right? And you find the code in there that'll make that happen. That's the best thing I can tell you is think about in English what you want it to do. And then we search the documentation to find out in English how to turn that into code. Into code. And it won't be that difficult the more, the more that you see this. And the more that I do of this, I'll explain it every time. Hopefully it'll make, it'll make uh, good sense. And that's it. Um, 
I have nothing else for you today, guys. Let me go back to the last bit of the chats here, make sure that we're good. Um, there it is. Um, Y'all have a great uh, rest of your Tuesday. I will see you again tomorrow morning. I might practice tonight, we'll see, but if for sure tomorrow. I haven't done a lot of nighttime practice just because of my schedule. I, 12 hour work days are killing me. Um, so <laughs> I've been just too tired to do it at night. So there we go, guys. Uh, see you in the morning. Um, have a great one. Have a great Tuesday. And I'll see you tomorrow for another uh, Southern Border Run and more Windcaps, Windcraps coding. Thanks, everybody. Bye.